The city was blazing with terrible flames, everything around was engulfed in flames. The people in the building showed no signs of life, and suddenly a mysterious guy burst into the building. The mysterious guy looked around, and I noticed a boy and a girl sitting in the corner. The boy took out a knife and looked intently at this guy. The mysterious guy looked intently into the boy's eyes, and then tears involuntarily flowed from the boy's eyes. Suddenly the mysterious guy pulled out a gun. At the same second there was a shot towards the boy, and suddenly the woman hit the table with her hand. The guy woke up from this action and greeted the woman. The woman turned to the guy and told him to hurry up and find a room for her, otherwise she would tell his boss everything that he was slacking and sleeping during working hours. The guy told Miss Tao that he would find her a free room right away. The guy's name was Fang Zichen, he worked the night shift at the hotel reception desk. He's been working here since he came to G-City. The guy gave her the keys to room 206, and he complimented her and said that he looks good today. Miss Tao thanked him and asked if he could help her lift her things. The guy happily agreed to help her. Working the night shift was very tiring. In addition to cleaning the rooms, the guy had to carry some of the guests' things. Sometimes all sorts of people came there. A man and a woman immediately entered the hotel, the guy greeted them. The two were frequent guests of their hotel. The guy was very jealous of this man. During working hours, quite a lot of guests came to him. The guy lived like this day after day. It seemed to the guy that it had become too calm, but that was what he was striving for. And then suddenly the front door opened. The guy immediately thought it was her who came. A beautiful girl came into the hotel and she asked the guy that he seemed very tired from working all night. The boss returned to the hotel in the morning and brought him something to eat. The girl said that after breakfast she could go back to her room and get some rest. The girl asked him to eat slowly, otherwise he might choke on his food. The guy happily agreed with her. This hotel was opened by boss and her husband. But due to the accident, boss became a widow, and now she ran the hotel alone. The guy thought that this girl is not only caring and kind, but also has a perfect figure. She was the very goddess in his thoughts. The girl asked Jichen if he had a girl he liked. Jichen was very surprised by her words. He asked why she was asking about this so suddenly. She said that she just asked because she was interested in how he would live further if there was no hotel. She asked him where he would live without a hotel. The guy said that if there is no hotel, he will continue to work for her. The girl laughed and said that he was a stupid boy and that he had not yet found something to do in life. Jichen asked her why she suddenly started talking about life without a hotel, and that she was really hinting at his dismissal. She said that he was a good and hard-working worker, and that she had no reason to fire him. But she added that realtors from the White Shark Group had spoken to her many times about the demolition of the hotel. She said that they want to buy everything on this street in order to build a large-scale building here. The guy asked her not to despair, and said that their hotel would not be demolished just like that. The woman said that she has many memories of her husband associated with this place. She said that he had been gone for several years, and that nothing could remain the same, because people are constantly changing. The woman asked the guy to change too and find another place for himself. She said that if they offered her a good price, she would sell the hotel and return home. Jichen was very upset by this sudden news. Jichen lay on the bed and thought about everything that had happened. He thought that if boss really left this place, would he follow her? But he thought that he wasn't even her boyfriend, and she didn't even like her in this regard, and that most likely he would only become a burden for her. Jichen lay there and could not forget about the words she said. He thought that even if she liked him, she still wouldn't tell him anything, and began to close his eyes. Meanwhile, boss was sitting in the hotel, but then the front door suddenly opened. The boss greeted unexpected visitors. Three men stood in front of her and asked if she was Miss Su Jiao. The man said that his name was Ren Xiao, and that he was from the White Shark, and asked if they could talk. A woman put a cup of tea on the table, and she began to tell her that his people had already come to her and offered money for the demolition of the hotel, and that they offered less than 20% of the market value. The man said that the funds for demolition are assessed by their real estate market experts and that they are undoubtedly trustworthy. He said that the market price is constantly jumping up and down. The man handed her a piece of paper and said that he had brought a contract, which he personally checked, he said he couldn't see how sincere they were. The woman was very surprised. She asked why the amount indicated here is lower than the one they offered earlier. She said that she had heard that they use fraud and intimidation to get buildings at very low prices, but she did not expect it to be true. 
The man told Miss Sue that most of the buildings on this street had already been purchased by them, and told her not to try to use the opportunity to raise the price. The man threatened that she had better accept this agreement, and that otherwise they would have to take the necessary measures. She said that she would accept this agreement and that was the end. The woman asked them to leave and said that she needed to continue working at the hotel. But suddenly the man grabbed her hand. She asked him in surprise, what was he doing? The man ordered the door to be closed and said that he wanted to talk privately with Miss Sue. Meanwhile, Ji Chen was also sleeping on his bed. He heard the voice of a woman who asked him to let her go. And then suddenly the guy opened his eyes. Two men held a mess, Sue, and she said that if they didn't let her go, she would call the police. The man asked her a question and asked if she knew how they treat those who stick to their guns and start raising the price. He said they just make people regret being so greedy. And then suddenly the man pulled out a knife. The woman told them to let her go quickly. The man asked her not to make a fuss and said that otherwise she would have a scar on her face. And then suddenly someone knocked the knife out of his hand. And Zichin suddenly appeared in this room. The man was very surprised by this. And Jichen, without being taken aback, immediately punched him in the face, and knocked the man out with one blow. His accomplices were very angry with Jichen. And then Jichen turned towards his accomplice, and hit the second guy in the face. His last accomplice grabbed the woman and told the guy not to come near him, otherwise she would die. Jichen quickly ran up to him, and dealt a crushing blow to his neck. The woman was very surprised by his action. All three men lay on the floor and could not resist. The guy asked boss if she was okay. The woman said that everything was fine with her. The man stood up and said that how dare they challenge the white shark and promised that they would soon die. The man said his boss would deal with them. Ji Chen told him to go back and tell his boss that their hotel would not be as easy to break down as other establishments. He said that he would wait for them and would not back down until they offered favorable conditions. The man told his boys that they were leaving. The woman was surprised that Jichen could fight so well. She thanked him and said that luckily he came on time. The guy replied that he just knows a little kung fu techniques. The guy said that she had better go home until everything is settled at the hotel. But she replied that she was not afraid of them, and that on the contrary, she wanted to join the owners of other establishments and discuss a further plan of action. The guy said it was too dangerous. But Miss Sue said that with him she had nothing to fear. The guy was very happy to hear the words. Meanwhile, the man returned to his headquarters. And then suddenly there was a strong blow to the man's face. He collapsed on the floor after his boss beat him with a baton. Shen Yi was the regional manager of the White Shark, and he told the man that he was a useless person and asked why he returned empty-handed. His accomplices told the manager that the kid's skills were really something and asked him to send more than a dozen of their guys to deal with him. They said that they didn't even have time to notice the guy, and he had already knocked them out. Shen Yi said that people are not immune to accidents, and that they should be wise and use it. His subordinates asked if he really wanted to outweat the guy. Meanwhile at the local hotel, the woman cried and said that they put a snake in her store and told her to open a pet store and take care of them. A salesman at a grocery store said that they planted a rat on him, and said that his products should not be eaten, thereby scaring away all the customers. A local guy said that representatives of the white shark kidnapped his little sister after school and blackmailed his family. All these angry businessmen gathered in one place along with Jichen and Boss, people told them that they tried to attract reporters to this but they all turned out to be cowards. The boss said they did too many bad things. Jichen said that he recorded all their words on his phone, and that he would write a report and give it to the police. All the people agreed with Jichen and said that they had hope for him. The guy said that if they had decided everything, they could already go their separate ways, and she said that he would let him know if there was any news. The boss said that she didn't want to make a big deal out of a mountain, but it seemed to her that the situation was already too bad. Jichen said that they endangered her, and that he will show them all who is who. The woman embarrassedly told Jichen that it turns out he cares about her so much. The guy replied that she always took care of him, and of course he will take care of her. And then the guy said that he was already hungry, and the woman offered to order food for the evening. And then suddenly a guy in a courier uniform appeared in front of Jichen and asked if he could find out where Miss Su Jiao was. The guy said he had a package for her. The woman was very surprised and said that she had not yet placed the order, but he had already brought the food. The courier smiled and said that it was the owner of the noodle shop who asked him to bring her noodles, 
and said that she had been busy all day and would probably want to eat some noodles. Jichin said that this owner is so kind, and remembered that the same man had recently left them, the courier asked him not to drop the parcel. Jichin told boss that they didn't need to order anything anymore, meanwhile the courier said goodbye to them and left. The courier drove up to a standing car, and he told the manager that he did everything as he said. The manager was happy and said that the substance would act on them within half an hour, and then he ordered his subordinates to deliver them to the White Shark's warehouse. Meanwhile, in a warehouse far from the city, the White Shark representative mercilessly beat Jichin with brass knuckles. He said that he was already tired of beating him and he still hadn't woken up. No matter how they beat him, the guy didn't react at all and then they thought that maybe he was already dead. But the guy made some sounds and then they realized that he was definitely still alive. The representative said that he continues to snore as if nothing happened. Meanwhile in some dark place, Ba Su lay unconscious in a dark room, and suddenly the woman woke up, and suddenly jumping up from her seat, she began to look for Jichin. The woman's head was pounding, but she didn't understand what this place was, and suddenly two huge spotlights flashed in front of her, and thus they blinded the woman. The guy told Miss Su that she had finally woken up. The man said that this was their warehouse and that no one would bother them here. The woman asked who he was and what he wanted to do. The man introduced himself and said that he was the regional manager of the White Shark organization, and the person who stands next to him is the best operator in his organization. The manager said that the cameraman will film her. The woman said that they had already broken the law by kidnapping her, and that she would definitely call the police and that they would be arrested soon. The manager asked if she really wanted to call the police, and he said that soon she wouldn't even have the strength to stand on her feet, much less call anyone. The woman wanted to run away from there, but suddenly she crashed into a man. The collision caused the woman to fall to the floor, and she noticed that she was surrounded by some men. The man said that they are now going to have a lot of fun. The manager told the guys that they know how to scare a girl. The manager told the girl that she shouldn't have gotten involved with them and said that his guys would have fun with her slowly and for a long time. And finally, the manager said that let everyone know what happens to those who oppose the White Shark organization. Meanwhile, Jichin remembered his conversation with his father, that he once told his father that he liked lions, since they are the strongest of animals, and the father replied that if he had to choose one animal, he would choose the honey badger. Jichin wondered why his father chose him, because they are so small and it seems that they have no strength at all. But the father replied that you should not underestimate this boy, and he said that although they are not as strong as lions, they are the bravest animals in Africa. His father said that they never cowered even knowing that their opponents are bigger and stronger than themselves. And he asked his son if he thought it was great. The guy thought about his father's words and said that then he wants to be like a honey badger, and never be a coward, no matter how strong his enemy turns out to be. Finally, his father said that the enemies they will face in the future will be much more dangerous than lions and other animals, and if he shows even a drop of fear in front of them, then they will devour him. And gradually the guy began to come to his senses. The people standing there wondered if the manager had already started. They were sorry they would miss all the fun, because they were ordered to deal with this guy. One of them said that they had already finished with him, and suggested that he go and join the others. But suddenly Jichin grabbed him from behind. The man was very surprised at how this guy was able to stand up and thought, wasn't he tied up? Jichin asked the guys where he was, and why did he wake up here? Jichin asked where did they even come from? Jichin didn't understand why he was covered in beatings and blood, and even his clothes were torn. The people standing there wondered if this guy had really just woken up, and if he was just sleeping, then why couldn't they wake him up all this time? And then Jichin realized that he and the boss passed out after this meal, and asked what was their doing. Jichin asked if they were white sharks, and told them to quickly tell him where his boss is. And then the representatives of the white shark decided that they needed to take down this guy right now. They attacked Jichin en masse. In response, Jichin looked at them decisively. Meanwhile, things were unfolding in the white shark's warehouse. Boss Su told men not to approach her. The man told her not to worry and that they would finish their business quickly. And then the woman screamed and asked for help. And suddenly a deafening roar was heard behind the manager. The manager was very surprised and asked how he got here. Jichin looked at the manager with a serious look. Boss Su was glad he was alive. The manager said that since the guy showed up here, what did he do with the people who were watching him? Jichin said that his guys held up well. 
but he had to teach them a couple of lessons to get them to tell where they were. Jichin said that they are truly scum, and how dare they kidnap and molest a defenseless girl. Jichin asked to just let his boss go, and sincerely ask for his forgiveness, and maybe then he will let them go. The manager told him, can't he see how many of his people are here? But the guy resolutely replied that even hundreds of his people would not be able to cope with him. Jichin told the manager that this was his last chance to let the woman go. But then the manager ordered his guys to chop him into pieces and throw him into the river. And immediately all his people surrounded Jichin from all sides. And then one of them rushed at Jichin with a knife. The woman told him to leave her here and run. And then a representative of the white shark almost got him from behind with his knife. But suddenly Jichin turned around and hit that guy in the stomach with all his might. The guy fell to the floor with all his might. And after that, Jichin drew the woman's attention to him. And he admitted that he had liked her for a long time. The woman asked what he was talking about. Jichin said that on the very first day when he first arrived in this city, he saw her recruitment advertisement and decided to get a job with her. And then when he first saw her, she was so beautiful, gentle and kind. And later he realized that she was very caring. She gave him a warmth he had never felt before. He knew she treated him like a little brother. But since she took care of him, that means he will take care of her. Jichin asked the woman to answer his question. He asked Su Jiao if she would be his girlfriend when they got out of there. The woman shed tears and agreed to his proposal. Jichin was very happy with her answer. The white shark people around him went crazy and told him how dare he pick on the girl in front of them, and that he was not paying attention to them at all. The man called Jichin a freak and took a swing at him. But then he received an immediate retaliatory blow to the face from Jichin. Jichin asked not to waste his time and for them to get out of here. The manager thought, isn't this kid afraid to die? And after these words, a massacre began in the warehouse. The remaining subordinates of the white shark were horrified by what they saw. Jichin asked what is all they can do. He killed almost all the people from the group. The remaining subordinates laid down their arms. They knelt down and begged Jichin to let them go and said that they were just hired thugs. Jichin told the manager that his people had already given up, and that it was time to give up and go with him to the police. The manager laughed and said he was truly amazing, and that he single-handedly killed all his people. But he said that Jichin really thinks that this will be enough to defeat him. And suddenly he pulled out a gun from behind. And he said that it doesn't matter how strong he is, and he said that he still won't be able to withstand gunfire. The manager said that the guy is about to get a bullet in the forehead. Jichin stared at the manager. The manager pointed his gun at him. The girl asked the manager not to shoot the guy, and said that she would do whatever he said, if only he would let them go. She said that she would give her hotel, herself, and anything else he wanted, but only so that he would let him go. The manager grinned and said that he would take everything she had. He said that he wanted to take everything and suddenly shot the guy. But suddenly the guy dodged the bullet. The manager kept shooting at him. But Jichin continued to dodge the bullets. The manager thought that how does he dodge bullets. He kept shooting and kept telling the guy to die. But the guy approached him and said that only he himself would die here. And then he hit the manager in the stomach with all his might. Jichin said what kind of Su Jiao is he? And then he dealt a crushing blow to the face, and immediately the manager fell to the ground. The manager lay unconscious in front of Jichin. The remaining subordinate said that the manager had lost, and that it was time for them to get out of here. The guy said everything is fine now. Su Jiao ran to Zichin, and hugged him with all my might. She asked Jichin not to act so recklessly again. The guy agreed with her and promised not to do that again. But suddenly she kissed Jichin. After the incident they returned to the hotel. Jichin was sleeping on the bed. He got enough sleep and started to wake up. There was no one near him, and he assumed that Su Jiao had already woken up. Jichin stood up and thought that now he would finally have an ideal life. The guy suddenly turned around. And I noticed that there was some paper on the table. The guy took the paper and thought that Su Jiao had really left. There was a note from Su Jiao, she said that she sold the hotel and left, and left the guy a check for 100,000 yuan. She wrote that when Jichin reads this letter, she will already be going to her hometown by train, and she said that in order to settle this incident, the white shark agreed to pay 20% more than the market value to all establishments for the demolition of buildings, and that other heads also agreed. She said that from this day on the hotel becomes the property of the white shark organization, and that these 100,000 yuan should be enough for him to find a new place to live. She said that he is a very good person and that she does not deserve him. 
and that in the future he will definitely meet a girl better than her. But she will always remember him, with love Su Jiao. Meanwhile, a man arrived and sealed this hotel. Ji Qin never thought that he could lose everything he had overnight. He thought that Su Jiao was so cruel that she didn't even leave him her phone number. He thought that first he needed to write off the money and find himself a new place to live. Meanwhile, a car stopped near the bank. A man in a mask was closely watching this bank. His accomplice informed him that the roads were open at that time and that they could start right away. The man doubted and asked his accomplice, is it really worth it? We will inform him that as soon as they achieve success, they will immediately fly abroad and arrange a luxurious life for themselves. They were sitting in the car and then the man said that their target had appeared. Suddenly a huge car stopped in front of the bank. And out came a glamorous girl with glasses. The girl greeted President Lee. She said that he could be confident in his safety since she would personally protect him, Lee agreed with her. They all went into the bank, and the bank employee told President Lee to go there. She ordered the two guys to stay here. They immediately agreed with her. The girl and President Lee came to a huge metal safe. A bank employee opened the safe and asked President Lee to come inside. President Lee has found the cell he needs, and opened the locker in front of the employee. He took out a small red box from there. This box contained five pieces of torn fabric. The girl asked whether these pieces of torn fabric really cost 50 million. President Lee asked Miss Chiao whether she thought these stamps were beautiful. She replied that she was a simple worker and didn't really understand this, and that she only knew that they were very rare and very expensive. President Lee said that he traveled all over the world to collect these five stamps, he has been in the North and South for several decades and now he cannot measure them in money. He said that these stamps were his treasures, and that he would not survive if something happened to them. The girl asked him not to worry and said that with their protection his treasure would be completely safe, she told President Lee that he was willing to give part of his heart to the cultural exhibition and called him a true example of entrepreneurs. Lee said that if he had not lost to the pharaoh in Mahjong, he would never have given the stamps. The girl realized that the pharaoh was Director Wang from the cultural center. Meanwhile, Ji Chen came to this bank, and I thought that it seemed like you could withdraw money from this bank. The masked man looked at Ji Chen, and he told his accomplice that if they don't start now, then it might be too late. The accomplice agreed with him and gave the command to begin, and suddenly three armed men got out of the car. Meanwhile, Ji Chen entered this bank, and a girl with President Lee came out to meet him, the guards asked them if they had finished their work. The girl said that it was time for them to go to the cultural center. And then the guard suddenly looked towards the street, and he ordered the girl to lie on the floor. And then there was a huge explosion. Ji Chen looked back, and suddenly a huge stone flew towards him. The security guard asked the girl if she was safe. She replied that she was fine. The masked man said that this explosive was so powerful. His accomplice told him to talk less and take stamps quickly so that they would get out of there faster. The girl said that they stole stamps and that they need to quickly go after them. Ji Chen lay crushed under a stone, and suddenly his check burned down next to him. The girl quickly ran out into the street and got into the car. She ordered her trade friend to stay close to them. The robbers were driving their car, and one of them said that he didn't expect everything to be so simple. His accomplice said they were rich now. The girl caught up with the robbers in her car, and she told the masked freaks to quickly return the stolen item. The robber ordered his friend to hold the steering wheel straighter, and he said that now he will shoot them. The girl told her assistant to slow down. The man suddenly slowed down the car, and due to this they moved away from the robbers. The girl said that it was very dangerous, and it's good that they reacted quickly. The man told Nana that there was something wrong with the car. She was surprised and told him not to scare her because she was fine after all. For a moment it seemed to him that the car had become heavier, but in fact, the car became heavier due to the fact that Ji Chen was standing on the roof. Ji Chen looked at the robber's car. And suddenly he started running on the roof of the car. The girl was surprised, what were those sounds? But suddenly Ji Chen took a running jump towards the robber's car. He soared into the air because he jumped very high, and landed right on the roof of the robber's car. The robber was surprised, what happened? And then the robber's car began to drive in different directions and eventually they stopped. The girl ordered the assistant to stop the car. The robber asked his accomplice why he stopped the car and told him to continue driving. But suddenly Ji Chen broke the car window, and then he grabbed one robber, and he pulled him towards him through the car window. His accomplices were very surprised, what was it? 
The guys got out of the car to check what was going on there. They wondered where their accomplice Ganzi had gone, and then suddenly Jichin grabbed the second robber by the leg, and dragged the robber under the car. The last remaining robber told him to get out of there, whoever he was, otherwise he would start shooting. And then Jichin appeared behind him and asked what it was they caused that explosion. The robber was very surprised by his appearance. Jichin told the robber that if they were just robbing a bank, then why did they use explosives? And he said that because of them he lost his last money. The robber pointed a gun at him and said that it would be the end for him now. Jichin said that these were his words, and hit the robber hard right in the face. The robber flew up from his powerful blow, and landed with a crash right on the asphalt. The girl took out that very box of President Lee. Opening the box, she made sure that all the stamps were in order. Jichin held the robber and told him not to pass out. Jichin said that they must pay him compensation otherwise he will have to sleep on the street. And then this girl came up to him from behind and turned to him. She said that he didn't have to bash the robber because he had already lost consciousness. After everything that happened, they gathered together in one room. The men told Jichin that it turns out that life has beaten him so cruelly and what will he do now? Jichin cried and said what can he do? After all, now he will have to live on the street without a penny in his pocket. The girl ordered him to stop shedding tears. She said that he dented their car when he ran on the roof and that they rented it, and that their premium was not enough to cover its repairs. The guy said that he was in a hurry and that how could he know that the car would be so fragile. The man said that it was not a fragile car, but a Hummer, and asked Nana to just forgive this guy. After all, thanks to him they returned the stamps safe and sound. And besides, he has good skills. The man said that it would be better to let him work for them and work off all the damage. The guy said that he cooks and cleans well and asked to let him work for them. Nana answered the man that he didn't know about their situation. The man asked Nana to listen to him. And he said that the guy's skills are very good and perhaps with him they will be able to cope with more complex tasks. Nana thought that they had not received large orders for a long time. And then Nana's second assistant said that this guy is more than suitable for them. Nana thought that her two assistants Uncle Dai and third brother were already old, and that they weren't getting any younger over the years. The woman thought that if this boy joined them, they could fill the gaps in their strength, and that maybe taking him would actually be a good decision. The woman decided and told Jichin that he could work for them. Jichin asked, what should I do now? The man smiled and told Jichin that this place would now be his second home, but the guy had a feeling that he had just been deceived. Nana said that if everything is decided, then it's time for them to give him their uniform. Jichin thanked the woman. Nana told third brother that the guy would stay at his house for now. The man replied that bringing someone to your home is a little awkward, and said, maybe he will stay here in the company. The guy told them not to worry and that he could sleep anywhere. Nana told him that he would stay here. Meanwhile the night has come. An unfamiliar guy told the girl that she needed to hurry and that they were already half an hour late. A guy and a girl were walking along the corridor, they were aspiring singer Wang Yang and a broker from the Xingyi company Lu Tao, the girl said that immediately after filming she had to go here and asked what kind of person is this shark. The guy replied that it is very difficult to contact a shark and, fortunately for her, he turned out to be her fan. He the girl said that even if that's the case, aren't they here to just shake hands and greet each other? Lu Tao replied that if he agreed to finance them, they could release a new album. Lu Tao told Wang Yang that she had better try and sing well for him. They stood in front of the guards and Lu Tao said that they were invited to a meeting with Mr. Shark. The guard said that the gentleman was currently receiving other guests and asked them to wait a little. Lu Tao kindly agreed to wait for him. Sha Ching Tian was the president of the White Shark Organization, he asked his people who did this to him. The same manager was sitting in a wheelchair in front of him, Sha Ching Tian said that doesn't he know that the manager is his cousin? But then the subordinate told the master that all he knew was that the guy's name was Fong Jichen. The manager added that the guy is very good in one-on-one -on -one battles. Ching Tian got angry and said that those who dare to touch his relatives should be killed. Sha Ching Tian told his brother not to worry and that he would definitely avenge him. And then Sha Ching Tian ordered his guys to send this pathetic scum to feed the sharks, the guy begged the gentleman to let him go and said that he would help him avenge his brother. But the boss answered him that a dog that cannot even protect its owner is considered a useless dog. The guy yelled and asked for forgiveness from the gentleman. Wang Yang and Lu Tao stood near the gate. She asked Tao if he heard it, but then the guard said that Miss Wang Yang could meet Mr. 
Lu Tao smiled and said that it was great that they could pass, but then the guard said to him, didn't he hear what he said? And that only Miss Yang can go further. Lu Tao told her to go and that he would wait for her here. The girl asked him not to go anywhere. The guards went into the room with the girl, thereby leaving the guy alone in front of the door. They went inside and found themselves face to face with Mr. Wang Yang greeted the gentleman and said that she was very glad to meet him. And then the girl suddenly noticed that, that behind the gentleman in the aquarium the sharks were eating that poor guy. The girl was very scared and screamed. Sha Ching Tian told her not to be scared, and that his little ones would finish their meal soon. He offered to drink for now, and said that he would gladly listen to her sing. Meanwhile, at the meeting place, Nana with the team and Ji Chen. The men were about to leave first and said goodbye to everyone. Ji Chen and Nana said goodbye to them and said see you tomorrow. And Nana ordered the guy to sweep and wash the floor. Ji Chen told her that she is so diligent that she even works overtime. She replied that it was because she was very dedicated to her work. And having said these words, she simultaneously played cards on the computer. And suddenly Nana said that she was not going home not because of overtime, but because she lives here. The girl said that their company has been barely making ends meet for a long time, and that she rented out her house to cover the company's rent. And she asked him that otherwise, did he think that she would have lived here? And finally she said that if he wants to take a bath, he must warn her in advance. The guy agreed and thought that if this company was closed, he would again have nowhere to live. Nana said that she was sleeping in this room and that under no circumstances did he dare to go there. She said that otherwise she might stab her with a knife when she's asleep. Ji Chen said that he understood her. Nana closed the door and left the guy alone in the room. The guy thought she was much tougher than his old boss. And then suddenly two men with a girl appeared behind him. The woman apologized and asked him if he was an employee of Pippi Security. Ji Chen replied that he is an employee of this company. Ji Chen asked if she wanted their services. Didn't say that he would call his boss now. The girl ordered her boys to act. Ji Chen was very surprised by the words the girl said. And then suddenly two men wanted to hit the guy. But Ji Chen managed to grab his flying fist. And then he grabbed the second man's flying leg. Ji Chen held the two of them and gazed at this girl. The girl thought that he blocked their blows very well. But then these men tried to hit the guy again. One of them received a sudden retaliatory blow to the stomach. The girl saw all this and clapped the guy and said that it was wonderful. The girl did not expect that in such a small company there would be a real master. Ji Chen asked her if she was a representative of the White Shark Organization. The girl answered him that he had misunderstood something and said that they were not from the White Shark Organization, but from Tin Long Group. Ji Chen knocked on his boss's door, and he told her to open the door and that he had great news. She replied that she was busy now and that he would tell her about everything tomorrow. But the guy said that this time they have a very generous client and that they cannot miss him. He grabbed the doorknob and broke it. Ji Chen came into her room and said that they would no longer have to worry about money. The guy immediately asked for forgiveness and said that he didn't break the door on purpose. The woman told him to get out of there, and she hit him in the face with her fist as hard as she could. The guy showed her a receipt from this company. The girl said this check is for one million. The girl asked that they really were from Tin Long Group. The guy replied that they told him that if they completed this task, they would immediately sign the check. The woman asked what else did they say. But the guy replied that it was nothing. Ji Chen asked what Tin Long Group are rich. And why was she so happy when she heard their name? The girl smiled and said that this time the old lady had luck on her side. The girl said that Tin Long Group is the largest car dealer in the country and that its net worth is the largest in their country. And then the woman thought that why such a big shot turned to them. The guy said they used bouncers to check them out. But he dealt with them with ease. Nana thought that this guy is not as simple as he seems, and in addition he has great strength. She remembered that she locked the door and he just broke it. And then the girl took Ji Chen by the scruff of the neck. And she told him to answer where he served and tell honestly about his past. Ji Chen said that he was the commander of a special squad and that his past is confidential and he cannot reveal it just like that. Nana told him to look into her eyes when he answers. The guy asked Nana if she wanted to ask him anything else. The girl said that it's okay not to talk about his past but now he is an employee of Pippi Security and therefore it must work for the benefit of the company. The girl asked him not to forget that he still owes them money for repairing the Hummer. The guy replied that he would try his best. The girl said that the guy had a great mood and wished him a good night's rest. 
And she said that tomorrow an important day awaits them. The next day, the four of them came to the Tinlong Company office, group. They all sat and waited their turn in the reception area. Nana said that half an hour had already passed and why had no one met them yet. The guys told the boss that they have delicious cakes here and would she like to try them? The girl said that she would stop eating, and said that when they get a million, then they will throw a real feast. And then a man came up to them and told Miss Chiao that everything was ready and asked them to follow him. But the man said that she could only take one person with her. Her assistant told Ji Chen to go with her. But her second assistant was surprised and asked why he didn't send it. He said that it was only Ji Chen's first day on the job, and what would he do if there was an emergency? But then the man replied to third brother that the money was Tinlong group is not that easy to get and among them Ji Chen was the most capable guy. Nana and Ji Chen followed this man. Nana asked the guy to stay close. The man took them to a room and told them to go in there. They immediately entered this room. And we were very surprised, what was going on here? She saw the Fulong representative security. And also a representative of Panda security. Tianwei representative security was also sitting there. She thought that it looked like all the famous security companies in the city had gathered here. The girl was surprised that they were really invited too. And the guy thought that only they were invited. And then next to them someone said a phrase that even this tattered cat from Pippi Security was also invited here. Nana recognized the person who said this phrase. It was Big Bear and Su Yutu. Big Bear said that they haven't seen each other for a long time. Su Yutu asked the girl where her old disabled people were and said that she took them and exchanged them for a young guy. She winked at the guy and greeted him, calling him handsome. The guy greeted her back. But then suddenly Nana hit him in the stomach with her elbow. She told Ji Chen that if he flirted with Su Yutu again in front of her, she would immediately kill him. Nana told Su Yet not to think that she would defeat her this time because all her people were not with her. She said she doesn't care what dirty tricks they play. Su Yutu laughed and said, does she really think that she cares about her? Big Bear said that he wouldn't even have to use dirty tricks to defeat someone like her and that she could only blame her own weakness. The girl replied that she was sorry that his subordinates would have to go hungry. Su Yutu approached Nana and said that next time she should not stand near her, otherwise everyone will see the difference between them, thereby hinting at her short stature. Nana got mad and said that she was really happy that it had become a big thing. Su Yutu said that it was time for them to leave before she attacked them. Nana shouted that she had not finished the conversation yet, and Ji Chen held the girl and asked her to control herself. But suddenly a girl with guys behind her appeared in the room. Representatives from other companies said they were here. Ji Chen recognized her and told his boss that she was the girl who gave him that check. The girl greeted them and said welcome to Tinlong Group. The girl told everyone that her name is Mary and that she is the secretary of President Tinlong Group. And then everyone asked Miss Mary why exactly she had gathered them all here. Representatives of the companies wondered why everyone has such a check. Didn't she just want to see them? Mary said that in order to void a check, it must have the signature of their president, but in order to get his signature they would have to pass their test. Nana thought it seemed like they wanted to test their abilities. Nana asked Mary what exactly does she want from them. Mary replied that the test was very simple and that she wanted them to show everything they were capable of. She wanted them to knock out the rest of the companies. Representatives of other companies were very surprised and said that why is this necessary? And that all of them here are serious security companies and not bandits from the gateway. Su Yutu asked Big Bear, what does he know what to do? The guy replied that of course he knows. Mary continued and said that the company that successfully passes this test will receive a signature on the check. She also added that from cooperation with them they will receive 10 million every year. Nana and Ji Chen were very surprised by the numbers Mary said. All the other companies thought it was worth it and what if they cooperated with Tinlong Group, then a rich life is guaranteed for them. And then suddenly a representative of some company hit another guy from behind. And then everyone realized that someone had already started to act. And a representative of some company ordered everyone to go on the attack. Suddenly the people there started beating each other. Ji Chen thought that a whole massacre had begun here, and Nana said that as soon as they heard about the amount of 10 million, they immediately went crazy. And suddenly an unknown person rushed behind Ji Chen with fists. Ji Chen immediately turned around and hit this man right in the face. Ji Chen told the girl that this was a bodyguard competition and that it was better for her to stand aside, and the girl said that they could not fight such large companies and that it was better for them to leave from there. 
Jichen asked her not to worry and said that he would deal with them himself. The girl asked that he could really do this. Meanwhile, a fierce battle was in progress between all representatives of the company. A mysterious man sat in the room and watched all this happening on the monitors. The man watched with interest as Jichen fought. Meanwhile, Jichen continued to fight with everyone, he dodged the man's blow, and hit him in the stomach with all his might. The man immediately collapsed to the floor and lost consciousness. Big stood behind Jichen Bear, and said that it seems Chiao has found a cool employee. He said that he used to work under her leadership. Jichen asked if he would really feel sorry for him as a former colleague, but Big Bear replied that no matter who his opponent is, he will crush him. Su Yutu stood next to Chiao and said that Big Bear had excellent martial arts skills and was considered the best bodyguard in this city. And she said that it was all thanks to Jiao, and that she trained him so well. Jiao just grinned at her. Su Yutu asked how much money she promised this guy. The girl said that it's not about money or anything else, but she doesn't understand this. Su Yutu asked what she was getting at. Jiao said that Su Yutu would use any means to get guys like him. She said she couldn't even say such dirty things out loud. Su Yutu was very angry because of these words spoken, and suddenly Su Yutu slapped Jiao in the face. Jiao said that how dare she hit her. Meanwhile, Jichen and Big Bear stood face to face, but suddenly Big Bear quickly rushed towards Jichen, and I wanted to hit him with my huge fist. The Big Bear said this is the end for the guy, but suddenly he received a strong kick in the face in response. Jichen called him a fool and said that he would not be able to dodge attacks in the air. Big Bear fell to the ground with a crash. And after that he heard someone behind him say that this was very cool, Jichen thanked him. But when Jichen turned around, the guy said that he was not talking about him, and replied that he was talking about them. Meanwhile, a women's fight took place, Su Yutu called Jiao a dwarf and said that now she will do dirty things to her. Jiao replied that she has nothing else to attract men with except dirty things. The girls exchanged insults against each other. Jichen looked at all this and thought that women's fights are bad, but they look so beautiful. And then suddenly Miss Mary turned to him and said that their company Pippi Security successfully passed the test. Mary told the guy to pick up his boss and asked him to come with her and that she would accompany them to a meeting with the president. The three of them took the elevator. Zichen asked Jiao why she doesn't get along with Miss Su so much. She replied that why was he asking about this fool. And she said that he really wants to protect her. Zichen replied that he was just curious. She replied that to be honest, she doesn't even understand why everything turned out this way. She said that they were both graduates of the police academy. She said that at this time their duo was the best in the entire academy, and they gave it the name Huaxia Shuang Jiao. The girls said they were like two sisters. After the academy, she left for another city, and they gradually moved away from each other. But when Su Yutu came back, she was already a completely different person, and that from that moment on, she constantly confronted her. Jiao said that not only did Su Yutu squeeze out her business, but she also took people away one by one. Meanwhile they went up to the 69th floor, and Miss Mary said they were there. Jichen was very surprised by what he saw. There was a man sitting on a chair and he said that he had finally found the right person. It was the president of Tin Long Company Group Bai Dai. They greeted President Bai and the girl said that her name is Jiao Tiana and she is the head of Pippi Security, and the guy said his name is Fang Zichen. President Bai replied that he had already read the information about their company and that he knew who they were, and they were the ones he was looking for. The girl asked Mr. Bai to answer, why does he need them? And then Mary handed the girl something like a magazine. And she said, does she follow the news of the entertainment industry? Jiao said that the suicide of aspiring singer Wang Yang became a real sensation, and even without following the news of the entertainment industry, she knew about it. President Bai said that she was a good girl, and rumor has it that she killed herself because she couldn't stand the pitfalls of her job. President Bai said that his granddaughter had just signed a contract with Xingyi Company, Xingyi is an entertainment company, and said that Wang Yang was there too, and that they specialize in training new and upcoming singers. The president said that the entertainment industry is fraught with many dangers, and he is afraid that something might happen to his granddaughter, so he wants them to secretly protect her. He said that as long as they protect her, he will support them in every possible way. Jiao told President Bai that with his financial resources and reputation, he could hire more famous people, but why did he choose a small company like them? And then Mary replied that Mr. Fan Zichen surpassed all other companies. 
And Mary added that Mr. By promised his granddaughter that he would not interfere in her personal life. The girl realized that she wanted to break into the entertainment industry on her own. Mary said that no one knows Jichin, so only he can secretly protect the young lady, and added that to do this, he will have to become a broker in Shinyi Company and work undercover. The guy was surprised and asked how he would become a broker. Mary asked him not to worry about it and said that they would organize everything themselves. President Bai said that his son and daughter-in-law died in a plane crash, so he has no close people left except his granddaughter. And he told them to protect his granddaughter without revealing their identities. The president said that if everything goes well, they will receive many benefits from cooperation with him. The girl said that they are Pippi security take on this case and promise that they will protect his granddaughter. Jiao asked President Bai to be sure of this. President Bai gave them all the necessary information and asked them to read it carefully. The girl took the envelope with the case in her hands. And when she opened the envelope, she saw a photograph of his granddaughter. Jiao said this is what their target looks like. Xingyi Company Headquarters. The guy thought that yesterday he fought with bandits and today he will become an agent for a celebrity, he suggested it would be a wonderful experience. The guy was wondering what kind of stars he would meet here on his first day of work. Jichen entered this building and walked along the corridor. And then the guy heard someone say that he'd had enough. Meanwhile, the mug crashed loudly. The man held Lu Tao by the scruff of the neck and said that his job as an agent was clearly stated in the contract, but instead he had to clean toilets and wash floors all day. Lu Tao told him that he was just a trainee agent and of course he had to do all these things, and when his boss told him to do something, he had to do it immediately. The man said that he was not going to be a slave and wanted to hit Lu Tao. But suddenly Jichen held his hand and told him that all work does not start with what you want. The man asked to let him go, it was very painful for him. The man immediately ran away from there after Jichen let him go, and finally said that they were a crappy company and that he would not work here anymore. Jichen said to Lu Tao, why are young people so picky these days? Lu Tao asked the guy that he came here to collect a debt. And he said that he had already paid this month, Jichen told him that he had understood everything wrong. Jichen said that he came here to work as a trainee agent. Lu Tao asked that he was Fang Zichen, who was recommended to them by the recruiting network. Lu Tao said that being a trainee agent is very difficult, and that not every person can withstand it, that he just saw this for himself. The guy said that he used to be a soldier and that he could handle any hard work without any problems. Lu Tao said that their salary is not as big as he thinks. Lu Tao said that he would receive a fixed monthly salary of 2000 he will work all week, and must arrive immediately upon the first call, he said that the guy will literally live in this company and carry out all his orders and that he must sign a contract for three years. And Lu Tao asked the guy if he still wanted to work with them, Ji Chen said that he had a childhood dream, and that since childhood he wanted to work with celebrities, he said that he would do anything to fulfill his dream, but deep down, Ji Chen thought that what fool would want to work for them. The guy asked when he can start work. Lu Tao thought that the guy was either a fool or really had a higher purpose. Lu Tao said that first he should bring him a glass of water. The guy kindly agreed and said that he would be there soon. But then Jichen suddenly slipped and stepped on a broken cup. Zichen fell to the floor with a crash. And suddenly the door opened in front of him. And at that very second a beautiful young girl walked into the room. Jichen remembered that this was President Bai's precious granddaughter, but during the fall he crashed into the girl and dropped her. Lu Tao asked the guy to be careful. The guy stood up and asked the girl for forgiveness, and said that he didn't do it on purpose, the guy asked if she was okay. The girl said she was fine. And at that moment, Ji Chen looked straight into her eyes with surprise. She asked if he was okay, and then Ji Chen realized that he had fallen in love again. Ji Chen told Miss Bai Jilling that he was very sorry for that. Lu Tao said that he would fire him and the apology would be accepted, the guy asked why they are so cruel. The girl said that Tao Tao likes to trick newcomers like that, but in fact he is a very good person. She said that he just wanted to test his willpower and desire to work with them. The guy said that he really wants to work with them, and in my heart I thought that Miss Ji Lin is a little angel. Lu Tao suggested to Jilin that they start working right away. The girl replied that she was full of energy and ready to work fully. Lu Tao told Jilin that she looked too cute and that he couldn't take her seriously. Lu Tao told the newcomer, since he decided to work with them, he must be ready to give his all for the good of the company, the guy thought that somewhere he had already heard this. 
Lu Tao instructed Ji Chen to load all these boxes into the car, the guy thought, why are there so many of them? Lu Tao said that today they will have to visit many different places, and naturally for this they need to take a lot of clothes with them. And then suddenly a familiar hummer stopped in front of the building. Nana told third brother that the target had been identified and that they had gone outside. The men were glad that they were given a new car for protecting their granddaughter, and that now there is no need to rent cars. Third brother asked Nana if it was comfortable for her to sit in the back. She said that it was very spacious and that she could even sleep here. The man told Nana that they were at work, but she told him not to worry because Ji Chen would look after her himself. Meanwhile, Ji Chen and the others arrived at the studio. The man stood in the studio and ordered the others to give more light, and asked the guy that the AH-48 group had already arrived here. The guy told the gentleman that the head of the Xingyi company wants to meet with him. Lu Tao greeted brother Wang Yuan and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. Lu Tao put his hand on his shoulder and said that he did not expect that he would become a director in just a few years, and that it was very cool. Wang Yuan got angry and said that who allowed him to let go. Lu Tao was very surprised at this reaction. And Wang Yuan told Lu Tao that he thought he was some kind of important agent. And he said why the hell did he dare to be late. Wang Yuan said that he was nothing more than trash, and if it weren't for his temporary success with Wang Yang, he would never have called him as his replacement. Lu Tao asked him not to talk about Wang Yang now, Ji Chen stood behind him and asked Ji Lin in a whisper, who is this guy? She said that he is the general director of the evening show GTV, and is responsible for almost all shows on TV. The guy said that then they don't need to quarrel with him. Lu Tao introduced by Xiling to the man and said that he had recently signed a contract with her and that she had a very good voice. The girl greeted the director and asked him to take care of her in the future. The director thought that she had a really nice voice and that she looked good, and perhaps she would be even more popular than Wang Yang was. Wang Yuan said that if she agreed to do dirty deeds with him, then he could promote her to the top of TV. Ji Chen became angry at these words. Lu Tao told him that he can joke. Wang Yuan said that the audition will start soon and we need to prepare for it, Lu Tao replied that he understood him. Ji Chen was very angry with this man. He involuntarily clenched his fists in anger. But then suddenly Ji Lin took his hand, and she told Ji Chen that everything was fine and asked him not to be so angry. She said that he was just making a bad joke and that there was no need to take his words to heart. Ji Chen agreed with her words. Meanwhile, Wang Yuan was saying that the show would start in half an hour, and told everyone to go and get ready, and said that he would go to the office for a while to rest. And then suddenly someone called Wang Yuan from behind. It was the director of the White Shark Organization, he said that the show would start soon, and asked why he was walking around here doing nothing. Wang Yuan said that he would immediately tell his younger brother to arrange a VIP room for him, Mr. Shark said that Wang Yuan is such an interesting person, and that he is always invited to these shows, and didn't he know that? He asked if he left room for his singer. Wang Yuan apologized and said that he did not know that he would bring a person. No, the director of the White Shark lightly slapped Wang Yuan's face. And the girl standing next to the director told him that he must be completely green if he doesn't know such simple things. Wang Yuan said that they could have warned him, and he would have prepared a place for them in advance. The director of the shark asked that he really wanted to say that everything was his fault. And then he delivered a powerful blow to Wang Yuan's stomach. And then grabbed him by the hair with a strong grip. The director of the white shark continued to hold him by the hair, and he, in turn, asked for forgiveness from the master and said that he was wrong, the director asked that he had already forgotten who put him in the director's chair. The director of the shark said that it would be as easy as shelling pears for him to make him disappear and does he want to check it out. Wang Yuan asked the master for forgiveness and said that she would immediately find a place for his singer. And then immediately Wang Yuan called his deputy. Wang Yuan ordered him to immediately replace the Xingyi company singer with the singer brought by Mr. Meanwhile, all the people gathered in the dressing room. Ji Chen saw the singer there, Ma Xu Qi and hip-hop prince Lu Yifun. Ji Chen saw so many celebrities on his first day at work and thought that being a broker was really wonderful. And then in his earpiece his team said that he should use this opportunity. Yi Jiao asked to get Huang Zi's autograph for her. The guy thought that Huang Zi was really here. And then he noticed him and it seemed to him that he knew Mr. Tao. Huang Zi communicated with Tao and invited him to have dinner together. Huang Zi told Lu Tao that he wouldn't take no for an answer. 
Jichen approached Boss Tao and asked if Huang Zi had invited him to dinner. And what is their relationship? Lu Tao said that he helped him when he first debuted, so he always feels indebted to him. Jichen asked Tao that he didn't know that he was so popular that people lined up to get his autograph. Tao asked the newcomer if he knew Wang Fei. The guy said that of course he knew her, and that she was Xiao Dingfen's girlfriend. Lu Tao said that he led them both, and it was at that time that their relationship began. The guy couldn't believe his ears. Tao said that he thought that he was going to Xingyi because he had heard about his successes, and wondered what was wrong. And Tao suddenly asked the guy why he chose them. The guy thought at that very moment that he was about to be found out. Jiao yelled at the guy over the radio and asked what the hell he was doing. And really he didn't get acquainted with that information, but suddenly someone behind him asked what they were talking about. Ji Lin stood there and asked this question. She said that she had already changed her clothes and asked how she looked. Ji Qin said that in this dress she looks like a little angel, and Lu Tao added that this dress suits her very well. Ji Lin stood in front of them in a beautiful white dress. Ji Qin thought that she was so beautiful and that she would definitely become super popular. And then suddenly Wang Yuan's deputy burst into the dressing room and said that he had finally found them. He said that there were minor changes in them, and said that their singer would not be performing today. Ji Qin and Tao were very surprised by this decision and asked why their singer would not perform. And then someone in the dressing room said that their place was given to her. The girl of the director of the White Shark was sitting there, and she said that in this area it is very important to have big people behind you. She grinned and said that they should start singing in some bars rather than on TV. Tao said that Ji Lin has a wonderful voice and that she is no worse than her, the deputy told Tao that he had better not contradict her, since Mr. Shark himself brought her, and added that he could not resist him. Tao asked the deputy if he was really talking about a shark. Ji Chen told the girl not to be too arrogant and that he would go to complain to the director. And suddenly Tao grabbed Ji Chen's hand and told him to forget about it and not make a lot of noise. Ji Chen asked, why should he forget about it? Lu Tao became even more angry and once again told him to forget it, he said that they will still have a chance to prove themselves in the future. Ji Chen replied that this would be the first and last time. And then Ji Lin looked and said to Tao Tao. And she said that it was okay, and asked them to go back and that next time they would prepare well and perform well. Lu Tao said that he would definitely give her the opportunity to perform next time. Tao said that gold will always shine no matter how hard they try to hide it. But Ji Chen was still very angry with them. Tao told Ji Chen to pack his things and said that they were leaving. And then he was surprised, where did Ji Chen go? Meanwhile, Ji Chen kicked the door and entered the room. Wang Yuan was surprised what kind of ghoul dared to enter there and that doesn't he know that this is the director's room. Ji Chen said that he wanted to discuss something with him. The guy asked why he removed their singer from the performance. Wang Yuan jumped up from his seat and said that he was the director, if he said so, then so be it, and told the guy to get out of here. But for such words the director received an immediate blow to his face. And then the guy looked at his monitor. And he was shocked that the director was spying on women changing clothes. The director began to make excuses and said that he was just checking that the artists were okay. Ji Chen told the director that he was just a pervert. Meanwhile, Tao called Ji Chen, and he, in turn, did not pick up the phone. Ji Lin told Tao Tao that she would go and change her clothes back for now. And then Ji Chen brought the director with him and told Tao that he had talked to him a little. Ji Chen said that the director agreed to let them perform and told them to go and prepare, the director wished them a good performance. Meanwhile the show started. The singer sang on stage and warmed up the audience. The White Shark's director was watching her. Ji Chen ran up to Tao and said that everything was ready and Jilling would soon take the stage. Tao said that it was good that the director had specially prepared this room for them and that the stage could be clearly seen from here, Ji Chen agreed and said that nothing more was needed. Ji Chen said that in the end, their efforts today will finally pay off. And then Lu Tao thanked Zi Chen. The guy was surprised why he was thanking him. Yi Tao said that if he had not fought for Ji Lin's place, she would not have competed today. Lu Tao continued and said that Ji Ling is a stubborn girl and that she had already been offered to sign a contract many times by other larger companies, but she still stayed with him. Ji Chen thought that Director Wang was also right because he was not some kind of super agent and had not been famous for anything for a long time. Ji Chen told the boss that he didn't understand one thing, and he said that before he was on top and was a respected person, so why has everything changed so dramatically now? 
The guy asked maybe there is some special reason for this. Tao said that many people say that fame came to him too early and that at the age of 20 he was already a famous agent. Tao became popular and rich, and spent a lot of money on expensive swill every day. And then he got involved in gambling and lost a large sum of money there and he had to pay it back for more than 10 years. Tao said that at this time the artists he led left him one by one and in the end he was left alone. Ji Chen told Tao that as the saying goes, the prodigal son never forgets his roots. And that he is sure that soon everyone will remember about him. Tao asked the guy if he was trying to appease his superiors. Ji Chen laughed and said and look at the stage and that it looks like it's Ji Lin's time, Tao said that now she will surprise everyone. And then the charming Ji Lin appeared on the stage. All the viewers were shocked by such a cutie, they had never seen her before, and they were wondering what her name was. And then Ji Lin began to sing a song. Tao told Ji Chen that he would now witness the birth of a new star. Ji Chen said that now the whole country will know her name. She sang a song, all the spectators were amazed by her singing. Ji Chen thought that this was truly the birth of a star. The shark's director also watched her sing. He really liked her singing and ordered his guys to check who was behind her, subordinates agreed with the shark. Director Wang Yuan walked along the corridor and thought that these Xinyi dared to threaten him, he said that he would not just leave this to them. Wang Yuan thought that now he would inform whoever needed it and no one else would hear about this singer. And then suddenly he was grabbed by the shoulder from behind. It was Jiao's men who ordered Wang Yuan to go with them to the police station. Meanwhile, Jiling and Lu Tao were already sitting in the car and told Ji Chen to hurry up because they were already late. They went by car to the dance teacher. The singer's work was very difficult because immediately after recording they went to a dance teacher to learn how to dance. At this time, Ji Chen and Tao had a little snack. And then we went on business again. He began to receive twice as many orders. They were all driving together. And Ji Chen asked Ji Lin to sing a little. But when he turned around, you saw that Ji Lin was already asleep. Tao told Ji Chen to give her some rest because soon they would have to go to record the song again. Ji Chen immediately agreed with Lu Tao. Meanwhile, at the Shanha Company office group, the director of the Great White Shark appeared, security guards searched him upon entry. And after that, tell him that now he can go inside. The man who was sitting at the head of the table asked Ching Tian why he was late. He replied that he had been stuck in traffic for a long time. Chairman Shanha Group Chiu Wanshan ordered Ching Tian to sit down. And then the general manager of the underground casino Shanha Group said that she thought that Ching Tian was having fun with some star again. The director of the White Shark smiled and said that none of his ward stars can compare with her beauty. And then someone told Ching Tian that the conference should have started a long time ago and that he was very late. Shanha's format and pharmaceutical industry, Group Chiu Junliu, he said that Ching Tian doesn't seem to take them seriously at all. And then someone answered him and said that it looks like someone is dissatisfied with Baby Sha. It was the head of the entertainment industry in Shanha Group Flutter Fei. Sha Chen Tian thanked everyone for their help. He thought what the hell kid he was, he wished he could tell her that. Chairman Chiu Wanshan said that now that they are all assembled, he can begin. The chairman said that the lands they recently crushed under Shanha Group is now enough. And that currently almost half of the city territory belongs to their company. The chairman said that their real estate development plan had reached the first stage so they needed. Select someone responsible for the second stage. But then the woman said that no matter who was chosen, she would be the head of Mr. Chiu's decision. Flutter Fei asked so who will Mr. Chiu choose. The director of the White Shark asked the old man what kind of game he was playing. Chairman Chiu said that they are all like children to him and that he is proud of each of them. And he said that, for example, Flutter Fei is the head of the entertainment industry and copes with everything alone. And that thanks to her, nightclubs and karaoke couples are opening one after another and that at this rate they will catch up with the first in this area Golden X Gate. And Du Litan also pleased the chairman with her successes. He said that the casino has always been and remains their most profitable business. The chairman said that although the White Shark Company of Ching Tian was only recently established, it is not already bearing fruit. He also managed to promote many new stars and this brought them great popularity. And the representative said that opposite him is their pharmaceutical company in which they only invest money but do not get any results. He said that he is just a simple old man who looks at everything objectively. And he told his son not to think that there would be any concessions for him. And he said that now there is no need to choose someone responsible, so they will do this. The rep gave them all one month. 
and he said that the one who collects the most money will be able to become responsible for the second stage. The people sitting there were indignant and thought that this old man was looking only at the results and not at the process itself. And they said that as long as it does not cross the boundaries of what is permitted, they can turn a blind eye to it. After that, Ching Tian drove his car. A girl was sitting in the next seat next to him and asked why he needed her so late, and did they need to meet someone? Ching Tian replied that they needed to meet with the big boss, that he had always supported him, and said that this girl should please him in every possible way. She replied that she was not going to do anything with anyone, and she said that she was his girlfriend and he shouldn't do this to her. Ching Tian replied that she didn't understand something. He said that a huge number of girls want to become his subordinates, and asked if she really thinks that she is somehow different from them. He said he's already met hundreds of girls. He told the girl that she was just another toy and should be aware of it. And finally he said that as long as she obeys him, he will continue to play with her. Meanwhile they arrived to the big boss. The big boss told the girl to look at him. The big boss sat on his chair and looked at the girl. Meanwhile, Ching Tian was driving his car and thought that he became successful not because of connections or the fact that he has abilities. He was able to achieve everything because he knows how to use everyone around him for his own purposes. And then a call came on his phone, his people said that they found out about that girl and that she works at the Xinyi company. Ching Tian was surprised, is it really Xinyi again? Meanwhile the rain was pouring down, and Ji Lin said that she had to leave first. Ji Chen told her that it was raining outside and asked her to return home as soon as possible, Tao ordered Ji Chen to get into the car, and said that they still needed to return to the office and plan for tomorrow. Ji Chen replied that he was already going to the car, but suddenly Ji Chen noticed that some unfamiliar guy followed behind Ji Lin. The mysterious man continued to stalk Ji Lin, but Ji Lin noticed the man, and turned into some alley. But the mysterious guy suddenly grabbed her hand. Ji Lin was very scared because of this. The mysterious guy asked Ji Lin that she really didn't recognize him. The guy said he was her number one fan, and that he has been continuously following her since her first performance. Ji Lin replied that she recognized him and asked that his name was Suyazong, right? The guy was happy and said that he didn't expect her to remember him, he said that Ji Lin promised to give him an autograph. Ji Lin said that she remembered that there was no problem, she would immediately give him an autograph and asked him to let go of her hand first because she was in a little pain. The guy let go of her hand, apologized and said that he was too nervous. He said that he carries a poster with her image everywhere and said that now he will get it. The guy said that he had been waiting for this moment all day, but Ji Lin began to move away from him. The guy got angry and asked why she was trying to leave. After all, she promised to give him an autograph. Ji Lin replied that she was not going anywhere and would give him an autograph. But the guy wanted to pounce on her, and told her not to lie, and that she did not plan to give him an autograph, but was just looking down on him. But suddenly someone grabbed this guy from behind. It was Ji Chen, he threw him away. And he said that he would not allow him to lay a finger on Ji Lin. But suddenly the guy took out a knife and told Ji Chen not to come near him, otherwise he would kill him. Ji Lin noticed that Ji Chen was bleeding, but he replied that he was very sorry that that guy touched his new suit and tie. That strange guy told Ji Lin that this is not the end, and that he will come back. Ji Chen said that he would not let him leave, but Ji Lin asked him not to follow him. Ji Chen said that if he lets him leave now, he will come back again, but Ji Lin said that this is still her fan, and that she cannot explain it in words. Ji Chen asked what if he hurt her. And he said that she shouldn't cut him any slack, even if he's her fan. But Ji Lin replied that Ji Chen would protect her from all dangers. Ji Chen thought he loved his job. Meanwhile, Ji Chen was sitting in Ji Lin's room. He was very excited, because after all, it was his first time in a girl's room. Ji Chen realized that the noble Miss Jilling was living alone in a small room, and he realized that it seemed like she wanted to achieve everything on her own. Ji Chen thought that she was a real star and that she should not live here, but at that very moment Ji Lin called him. Ji Lin asked the guy why he was still sitting in his clothes, and asked him to take off his clothes to treat his wound. Ji Chen had a very muscular body. Ji Chen said that if she had already treated the wound then it was time for him to leave. But Ji Lin replied that she had already told Tao Tao that he would stay overnight in order to protect her if anything happened. Ji Chen was very surprised by her words, and began to get dressed, and said that he could no longer be here. But suddenly Ji Lin hugged him. Ji Lin asked him not to leave and to stay the night. 
Ji Lin said that today's incident reminded her of the day she met Tao Tao. She said that she was very tired, and that she just needed a man's shoulder to lean on. Ji Lin said that when she was just starting her career, her brokerage company often took her to all sorts of parties. But at one of these parties, a drunk guest wanted to harass a defenseless girl. And then Lu Tao burst into the room and saved her. Lu Tao said that if he even lays a finger on Ji Lin, he will call the police and they will put him in jail. And then Tao Tao saved her from a dangerous situation, just like Ji Chen did today. Ji Chen asked her that this is why she signed a contract with Xin Yi. Ji Lin replied that not only because of this, she said that she already knew Tao when she was not yet in this industry, so for her signing a contract with him was just like winning a prize. Meanwhile, Lu Tao was talking on the phone, and he said that they would come to him tomorrow. Lu Tao sat and planned tomorrow's affairs. He said that tomorrow they will have a lot to do. And suddenly someone knocked on his door. Lu Tao Wu thought who came to him so late. Lu Tao opened the door out of anger and said that didn't he see the sign on the door that it was closed. And he was very surprised by the man he saw. Sha Chen Tian stood there, and he asked Tao what was the matter. And he asked if his personal visit really scared Tao that much. Tao closed the door in front of him and told him to leave and said that he did not want to have anything to do with him. But suddenly Ching Tian knocked down the door with one kick. And Lu Tao said that how dare he close the door in front of him. Sha Ching Tian said that this was the first time he personally came to talk to someone. And then some guy did not want to have anything to do with him. Lu Tao said that his singer died because of him. Lu Tao said that he would not cooperate with him and told him to get out of here. Tao picked up the fragment that was lying next to him. Lu Tao wanted to attack Ching Tian. But Ching Tian said that he really only wanted to talk about business. And pointed a gun at Lu Tao. And then he said that maybe he still wants to listen to what he has to say. Ching Tian said that he has a good eye for finding new stars. Lu Tao asked if he meant Jilin. Sha Ching Tian said that if they cooperate with him, she will undoubtedly become a superstar. And he told Tao that his life would also change and he could become a famous broker again. Tao said that his singer suffered because of him and that he would never allow him to ruin his man again. Ching Tian asked that he was really that bad in his eyes. Lu Tao replied that he liked his ability to make money out of nothing. Ching Tian said that this Jilin can bring them a lot of money. Meanwhile, Ji Chen was rushing to work. He thought what a beautiful day it is today. And then a huge hummer suddenly stopped in front of him. And Jiao appeared from the car in front of him. She grabbed Ji Chen by the ears, the guy was very surprised. And dragged Ji Chen into the car. They all asked Ji Chen why he didn't come back last night and that he was having an affair with them. They told him to say what he did last night. Ji Chen said that this is his personal matter and that he cannot tell them everything. Jiao said to shove his personal body far away and said that he should not forget who he is. Nana said that their goal is the granddaughter of a millionaire and does he think that he is worthy of her? And after these words she kicked him in the ass from the car, and finally she said that if because of him they lose this order, then she will personally put an end to him. Ji Chen was very sad because he really understood that Ji Lin is the granddaughter of a millionaire and a star, and he, after that, he came to work and saw Jilin there. Ji Lin wanted to take his hand, but Ji Chen did not allow her to do this. And Jilin said that there were cameras in the elevator and asked her to wait until they came out, she agreed with him. The guy quickly got out of the elevator and walked to the side, Ji Lin asked him to wait. Ji Lin didn't understand what was happening to him. But the guy thought that if Ji Lin found out his real identity, would she still like him? But suddenly he noticed that people were dragging a sofa from their room. Ji Chen was surprised and asked where they were taking their things. The guys reported that their boss told them that they were moving to a new place and so they were moving all their things. Ji Chen was very surprised that they were moving because Tao didn't tell them anything about it. And then Lu Tao himself came out to them and said that this was a rather scary place and so he decided that it was time for them to move. Ji Lin told Tao Tao that he doesn't have much money and why are they moving. Tao told her not to worry about money. And Tao said that they had a rich sponsor. Their new office was huge, Ji Chen thought that renting such a huge space couldn't be cheap. There was even a dance hall there, Lu Tao said that this will now be their new office. And then suddenly Sha Ching Tian came out to them and said that he was glad that they liked everything. He said that if they needed anything they could tell him and he would get anything for them. Lu Tao told Jilin that this is the president of the White Shark Company, Mr. Sha Ching Tian, and that he will be their new sponsor and boss. Ji Chen remembered about the White Shark Company, 
he remembered that they were the ones who kidnapped Su Jiao last time. Ji Lin greeted Mr. Sha and promised that she would try her best. Ching Tian replied to Miss Bai that she was a very attractive girl and that he was very glad to meet them. And then Sha Ching Tian wanted to kiss her hand, but suddenly Ji Qin did not allow him to do this. Ching Tian was very surprised and asked the boy what he was doing. Ji Qin told Mr. Sha that they should not use foreign etiquette. And then suddenly Ji Qin received a blow to the face from Lu Tao. Tao told him that how dare he talk like that to President Sha, and said that one more such behavior and he would be thrown out of this job. He told Ji Qin to immediately ask Mr. Ching Tian for forgiveness. Ching Tian told Tao to forget about it and talk about business instead. Ching Tian handed Tao the tablet and asked him to become more familiar with it. Tao was surprised because Ji Lin made it to the main page of entertainment news with a video of her first performance on TV. Ji Qin said that it seems that Ji Lin's beautiful voice has captivated many people. Lu Tao thought that a newcomer like Ji Ling could not appear on the first page and thought that it must be Mr. Ching Tian who tried. Sha Ching Tian replied that in truth this page can be bought for a certain amount of money. But he said what they write in the comments is the pure truth and that it shows that Ji Lin deserves such attention. Ching Tian said that now all the conditions for Ji Ling are prepared, all that remains is to create an impulse and it will become popular throughout the country. Ching Tian told Ji Ling that she will now have a lot of work and he hopes that everything will work out for her. Ji Lin replied to Mr. Sha to make sure, she promised that she would do everything in her power. After that they went to Ji Lin's photo shoot. Ji Qin looked at her and thought, why do they have to do such a revealing photo shoot? Lu Tao asked that he was really behind the times. And he said that at their stage, doing such a photo shoot is what is needed and from this Ji Lin will gain great popularity. Tao said that after this shooting they plan to act in a youth film. Ji Qin thought why the modern life of a star is so cruel. Tao asked Ji Qin that he had really fallen in love with Ji Lin. Ji Qin replied that this was not even in his thoughts and besides, she didn't like him at all. Lu Tao told Ji Qin to promise him one thing. He asked that today, wherever they were, he wanted Ji Qin to protect Ji Lin personally. Ji Qin told the boss not to worry and that he would definitely protect Ji Lin from any danger. After the photo shoot they arrived at a huge mansion. Ji Qin thought that this huge mansion is really only for Ji Lin. Tao replied that this is one of Mr. Sha's many properties. Lu Tao said that this is so that the story with crazy fans will not repeat itself and she will live in this safe and hidden place. Tao told Jilling that this place was much larger than where she lived before and asked if she liked it. She replied that she really liked it. Ji Qin thought that if Tao Tao knew Jilling's real identity, he wouldn't ask such stupid questions. Lu Tao replied that he was glad that she liked everything. Night fell and in the meantime Mr. Ching Tian arrived at this mansion. He looked at this mansion and smiled slyly. Ching Tian entered the house and went to the bathroom. The water was turned on in the shower and someone was already bathing. Ching Tian approached the shower room and sharply pulled the door in his direction. And he invited the child to wash with him. But instead of a girl, he found a guy there. Ji Qin said that he didn't think Mr. Sha was capable of such a thing. And then he hit him in the face and told him to get out of here. After this incident, they all gathered together in one room. Yi Ching Tian said that this mansion was only for Ji Lin. And he asked the other two why they also live here. Ji Lin replied that before she was chased by crazy fans and they are afraid that this might happen again and that's why her stomach is with her. Lu Tao asked Mr. Sha, why did he come here in the middle of the night? Ching Tian replied that he just came to check on the girl and ask if she was used to the new place and if she needed help. Sha Ching Tian said that he had an appointment for tomorrow and that it was time for him to go. Lu Tao said to Ching Tian see you tomorrow. Finally, Ching Tian told Ji Lin that she should go to bed early and have a good rest because tomorrow they have a hard day. And then Ching Tian heard that Ji Ling told Ji Qin to go back to the bathroom and wash off the foam completely, Ji Qin remembered that he jumped out of the bathroom without having time to wash himself. And Ching Tian asked the girl what did she just say. She replied that she told Ji Qin to go back to the bath. And then Ching Tian asked if his name was Ji Qin. Ji Qin gave a positive answer to his question. Ching Tian asked if he remembers Xin Yi. And he said that this was his cousin. Ji Qin, having learned that Xin Yi was his brother, asked how he felt. Ching Tian said that thanks to his care, he is now completely fine. Ji Qin replied that if he wants to come to him and personally thank him for his care, he can come at any time. Ching Tian asked him not to worry and said that they would definitely come to thank him. 
Ji Chen said that he is a very busy man and hopes that they will find free time to come to him. Ji Lin didn't understand what they were talking about. After this conversation, Sha Ching Tian left there in his car. Ching Tian called his people. They asked Mr. Shark what would he tell them to do. Ching Tian ordered them to find people for tomorrow and that he had a small errand for them. The next day, Lu Tao, Ji Chen and Ji Lin were driving to some forest, Tao said that President Sha told him that they were already waiting in the forest to shoot a new advertisement. Ji Lin asked Tao Tao what kind of advertising is this that makes them go to such a wilderness. He replied that he didn't know. It was an advertisement for tea, Ji Lin advertised green tea made from the purest mountain water. Lu Tao told the newcomer that he knows that Mr. Sha Chen Tian is not the person with whom he can afford to conflict. Ji Chen asked him to calm down and said that he himself knows what he can and cannot do. Tao asked does he really know his brother? And it looks like he doesn't like him very much. Ji Chen said that he had some beef with his brother, but how can you be so vindictive after all, it ended a long time ago. Lu Tao warned the guy and said that this scum remembers everything, and wished him to be careful in communicating with him. And suddenly two cars drove up there. The guy was very surprised by what he saw. Some ferocious gang got out of the car, they approached them with clubs. The director's assistant told his boss that two cars had arrived here and it seemed they didn't want guests. The gang leader told the director that this was their point and why didn't they ask permission to film from them. The director replied that they received permission from the forestry bureau and that they did not tell them anything about them. And suddenly the gang leader hit him in the face with all his might. And after the blow, he added that this is their point and that they cannot film here without paying them. The assistant directors asked what right do they have to beat people. And they said that they would now call the police and they would put them in jail for this. The gang leader grabbed the guy by the scruff of the neck and said that as soon as he tried to call the cops, then he would break off all his arms and legs. But then the gang leader saw the beautiful Ji Lin. He came up and started pestering her and calling her to play with him. But then suddenly the gang leader received a powerful knee blow to the head. The leader fell to the ground from a powerful blow. Ji Chen told Jilin not to be afraid and to stand aside while he quickly dealt with them. Bandits surrounded Ji Chen from all sides, they were all armed with knives and clubs. And suddenly they started attacking the guy. But then Ji Chen knocked out one bandit with a direct blow to the face. And the second one was kicked in the head. Ji Chen continued to knock out all the bandits. Looking at this, Ji Lin thought how cool he is. Lu Tao was surprised where did this kid get such skills. And then suddenly one of the bandits took a pistol and pointed it towards Ji Chen. Ji Lin shouted to the guy to be careful and be careful. Ji Chen turned around and looked at the guy with the gun. Lu Tao shouted at him to stand and not shoot. But suddenly the bandit shot him. Ji Chen dodged a bullet in a fantastic way. The shooting bandit thought that he really knew how to dodge bullets. And then the bandit remembered that they told him that their target was a real monster and that he even knew how to dodge bullets. He was informed in advance that if they couldn't hit the guy then they had to shoot the girl. And then suddenly the bandit pointed a gun at Jiling. And immediately the bandit shot her. But suddenly Ji Chen covered Ji Lin. The bandit was glad that he hit the guy. And continued to shoot him many, many times. But then suddenly a car appeared behind the bandit. And this car hit the shooting bandit. Ji Lin stood next to the guy and asked him to hold on with all his might and that help would be coming soon. But then Jiao quickly came to him and said that they would take him to the hospital. Ji Chen opened his eyes and asked Jiao if it was her. Jiao asked him to hold on and that now they would take him to the hospital, Ji Lin asked him not to die. Before losing consciousness, Ji Chen told Ji Ling that he was very glad that she was okay. Jiao and her team took Ji Chen to the hospital. They were all nervous and waited for the operation to end. Lu Tao asked Jiao if they would tell him who they were. She said that now she can say or that they are friends and here to protect them. Lu Tao said that he had long noticed this guy's abilities and he also noticed that they were following them. Jiao asked Tao that now that he doubted Zichen's identity, should he continue working with him. Tao laughed and said that she also thinks that this will change the fact that they have become real partners and that he is a good worker. And he said that moreover, he saved Jilin's life, and why would Tao fire him? Tao said that he just wants to know the real identities of Ji Chen and Ji Lin. And then Nana's assistants came out and said that they had found out everything. They said that this group of people were ordinary bandits from the gateway, but someone specially hired them to finish off Ji Chen, they grabbed one of them and he told them everything, he said that they were offered a good reward for this business. 
Nana asked if Ji Chen was the target then why did they shoot at Jilin? And Lu Tao was wondering who hired them, and then third brother said that the bandits were hired by the white shark. Lu Tao was surprised that it was a white shark, he didn't understand because they themselves signed a contract with Ji Lin. Nana replied that they knew for sure that Ji Chen would protect Ji Lin and that's why they shot her. And then Lu Tao got ready to leave somewhere, Ji Lin asked Tao Tao where is he going? He replied that he would leave here for a while, and when Ji Chen comes to his senses, he will return. Nana gazed at the departing Lu Tao, but suddenly Ji Lin asked Nana that it was her grandfather who hired them to protect her. Ji Lin repeated and asked everyone present if her grandfather hired them to protect her. Nana said that it seemed like there was no point in hiding it anymore, she said that they were supposed to secretly guard her, but since they were discovered, they would have to leave. But Ji Lin said that she hopes that they will stay and help her, she said that now she herself hires them to work. The assistants were surprised that she was hiring them, and they asked that she didn't want outsiders to help, so why does she now want to hire them? Nana asked if it was all because of Ji Chen. Ji Lin agreed and said that she wanted them to help her avenge him. Ji Lin said that she wants to catch those who hurt Ji Chen. Meanwhile, doctors worked hard to save Ji Chen's life. The doctors said that they had never seen people with such a will to live. After all, several bullets were fired at the guy, but he was able to survive. And suddenly the doctor noticed that his wounds were slowly starting to heal. Doctors thought the guy was a superhero. Meanwhile, Sha Ching Tian parked the car in the parking lot. And Ching Tian was very surprised. When he noticed that Miss Jilling was standing in front of him, Ji Lin told Mr. Sha that he had finally arrived and that she had been waiting for him for a long time. Sha Ching Tian asked Miss Jilling, why was she waiting for him? Ji Lin hugged him and he said that she could have just called him. Ji Lin said that today bandits came to shoot an advertisement, and they had a gun, she said that she almost got hit, and that she was very scared. Ji Lin said that she was so scared, Ji Chen was shot and Tao Tao disappeared somewhere. Chen Tian told her not to be afraid, and that as long as she was with him, nothing would happen to her. Chen Tian asked Ji Ling if she could let him take her to his yacht so she could rest there. But Ji Lin said that it was too late and asked to return to the mansion. Sha Ching Tian agreed with her. They came to her mansion. Ching Tian told Jilin that he didn't think she was so easily accessible. Ji Lin asked Ching Tian to turn off the light, otherwise she was a little shy. He agreed and turned off the light. And then suddenly sneaking up behind Ching Tian. Third brother hit Ching Tian on the head with his baton with all his might. After that they turned on the light. Sha Ching Tian lay unconscious on the floor, and Nana said that it was as easy as shelling pears. Ji Lin asked Nana, what will they do with him now? Nana said that they need to call the journalists, and they need to strip him naked so that his dignity becomes known throughout the city, she wanted everyone in town to know how obscene he was. Third brother asked his friend to do it. He was sitting in the car and said that he needed to find a bag with a phone and asked not to let down his guard yet. Nana asked Ji Lin to help her find ropes to tie him up just in case, third brother said that he was going to the car. Nana told him to come back quickly, but suddenly Nana looked back. And she saw Sha Chen Tian in front of her, he said that did they really think that he could be fooled so easily. Meanwhile, the administrator was sitting in the hospital. Ching Tian's subordinates approached her and said, can they find out where Zichen's patient is? Nana's assistant sat in the car and watched the video on the phone. And suddenly his friend third brother put his bloody hand in the car window. The man asked third brother what happened to him and why was he covered in blood. Third brother said that this Sha had deceived them all, and that he was too good and kidnapped Ji Lin and Nana. And he told his friend to go to the hospital immediately, third brother suggested that Ching Tian could have sent his people to the hospital for Ji Chen. Uncle Dai quickly arrived at the hospital and abruptly opened the door to Ji Chen's room. Ji Chen sat in the room and asked Uncle Dai why he came here. Ji Chen held the Ching Tian man's head in his grip and asked that these guys had come to finish him off. Uncle Dai asked him when he managed to recover. Ji Chen replied that when Ching Tian's boys arrived, he was already fine. Uncle Dai was completely shocked that the entire clip had been fired at this guy in the morning, and now he is in perfect order. Ji Chen said that these guys are again from this fucking white shark company. Meanwhile at the white shark headquarters, Nana woke up in a dark room. Nana and Ji Lin sat tied up in this room. Nana screamed at Ji Lin and asked her to wake up. Nana thought, what is this Ching Tian up to? I suddenly saw a man sitting in front of me. There sat tied and beaten Lu Tao. And suddenly Nana heard Ching Tian say that Tao was such an idiot, 
and that he wanted to quietly sneak into his office, but just at that moment he returned there. Ching Tian continued and said that Tao even tried to fight him, and added that he was either too naive or too stupid. Nana asked Ching Tian why he decided to betray Jilling, and if she disappeared, wouldn't that be a stain on his reputation? Ching Tian agreed to tell her everything, because anyway she will die soon. Ching Tian said that initially he really wanted to make her a superstar, but then Ching Tian decided to abandon this idea. He said that it was all that garbage's fault, he said that that guy was constantly dangling underfoot, and if she had been with him from the beginning, then everything would have worked out. And then Ching Tian began to paw Ji Lin, Jiao told him to stop this and take his dirty hands off her. And then Lu Tao called Ching Tian a bastard. Ching Tian replied that since he called him a bastard, it means he will do really bastard things. And then Nana said that he couldn't harm her because she was the granddaughter of President Tin Long Group. Ching Tian was surprised and asked if she was the granddaughter of Bai Dai himself. Nana said that they are relatives, and that Ji Lin is the only heir to all of Tin Long Group. Nana said that if he even touches her with a finger, he will know all the wrath of Bai Dai. Ching Tian's subordinate came to him and told the master that they had checked everything, and that Mr. Bai Dai actually had a granddaughter named Bai Jiling. Ching Tian thought that this time he really came across a real treasure, now Ching Tian understood why a guy like Ji Chen protected her. Nana asked Sha Ching Tian if he had shit his pants. Nana said that it was better for him to let them go on good terms, and that anyway he could not compete with such a big tycoon as Bai Dai. Ching Tian said that maybe she's right, but he can't let go either. Nana asked if he had any idea how much money Bai Dai could pay for his granddaughter. Ching Tian told Nana that since he couldn't play with Ji Lin, maybe she could play with him. After these words, Nana immediately spat on his face. Ching Tian replied that you won't get bored with her. And then suddenly Ching Tian's subordinate informed the master that their cameras recorded Ji Chen near the main entrance. Ching Tian was angry at these words, he asked that he didn't send people to the hospital so that they would end his life. The subordinate replied that they have not been able to contact those people for a long time. Ji Chen, third brother and uncle Dai stood near the main entrance. Third brother asked the guy that he could really cope with them alone. Ji Chen asked them to believe him and said that he is actually very strong. Ji Chen went inside the building, and he was met by a crowd of Ching Tian people. Ching Tian's subordinate said that he is only one and there are hundreds of times more of them here. Ji Chen said that they better tell where they are keeping his boss and Jilling. Ching Tian approached Nana and said that his people would deal with Ji Chen, and he could continue where he left off. And when Ching Tian came very close to Nana, suddenly she kicked him between the legs. Ching Tian screamed at the top of his voice in pain. And then he hit Nana in the face with his fist. Ching Tian called his subordinates and told them to throw her into the shark tank. Ching Tian's subordinate tell him where the kid killed all their guys on the first floor and is already going up to them in the elevator. Ching Tian ordered them to take electric guns and take him out of the elevator. Ji Chen went up to the 50th floor, and when the elevator doors opened, hundreds of people with electric pistols were already standing in front of him. They all shot at Ji Chen at once. But Ji Chen immediately rebuffed them. They didn't believe that even electricity didn't affect him. Ching Tian watched all this on the monitor. Ching Tian thought that this guy can dodge bullets, is not afraid of electricity, recovers quickly, and can fight so well, and then Ching Tian thought that Ji Chen was really a member of the legendary Wild Squad. And finally Ji Chen dealt with all his subordinates, and opened the door in which Ching Tian was. Ji Chen told Ching Tian that he had come for him. Ching Tian held Nana next to him and pointed a gun at her head. Ching Tian greeted the guy and said welcome to his party, and that he had specially prepared everything for him. Nana asked Ji Chen to forget about her and save Jilin. Then Lu Tao looked at Ji Chen and said that he was counting on him. Ji Chen told Ching Tian that he had better let his boss go. Ching Tian said that he really is not afraid of anything, and said that he is from the Wild Squad. Ji Chen was very surprised by the words he heard. Nana asked what kind of wild squad this was. Sha Chen Tian said that the wild squad is a mercenary squad and that it was founded by one of the richest people in the world. Ching Tian said that every mercenary in this squad has strength superior to that of mere mortals. He remembered that one of the sources said that only nine people from this detachment destroyed a terrorist base with more than 1,000 people. They found potential orphans around the world and turned them into super soldiers. But their training was extremely cruel, so many children died because they could not bear it. He said that for them there are no differences between top words and that they will do everything as long as they are paid money for it. 
Ching Tian said that one day a tycoon interfered with his boss's business, then he hired the wild squad. And then they quickly finished off all the people opposing his boss. And thus Shanha's standing behind him group has grown into the largest and most powerful company in the city. Ching Tian has already seen with his own eyes the skills of the man from Wild. He said that they are very fast and easily dodge bullets. And that even if they are accidentally hit, they quickly recover. Ching Tian told Ji Chen that he can do it all, so he is definitely one of the Wild Squad. Nana now understood why he was so strong, she thought she hired an international assassin. Ji Chen said that it seemed like he couldn't hide it anymore, and told Ching Tian that he was indeed right, and that he was a member of the Wild Squad. Ji Chen said that his previous codename was Shadow, but now he is a simple worker named Fang Ji Chen. Ching Tian shot at Ji Chen, and said since he is an ordinary person, then he can take his bullet, Nana yelled at Zi Chen to dodge. But Ji Chen predictably dodged the bullet. But then Ching Tian threw a test tube at him. Ji Chen grabbed the test tube in his hand and it broke. Ji Chen thought what it could be. Ching Tian laughed and said that it was a strong anesthetic and that a couple of drops would be enough to knock out a person, but he received a dose that could knock out even an elephant. Ching Tian asked Ji Chen if he really thought he could handle him. Ji Chen thought he fell for such a stupid trick. Everything began to swim in Ji Chen's eyes and he seemed to be losing consciousness. And then Ching Tian wanted to strike at Ji Chen. But the guy blocked his blow. And then Ching Tian hit Ji Chen on the head with the handle of a pistol. Ching Tian continued to hit the guy and delivered a strong kick. Nana asked Ching Tian to stop doing this. But Ching Tian ended up hitting Ji Chen in the face with a powerful blow. And knocked him out. Ching Tian said that this anesthetic is excellent and that he often used it on girls, one drop was enough for them to become obedient. Lu Tao was surprised by Ching Tian's words. But Ching Tian added that he also used it on Wang Yang. Lu Tao told him he was a complete bastard. Ching Tian laughed and said that his name calling was like a bomb for his ears. Ji Chen said that he was tired of listening to his nonsense, said that he would end it today. Ji Chen suggested continuing where they left off. Nana was surprised how Ji Chen was still standing. Ching Tian fell silent, and Ji Chen asked him, is he really not funny anymore? Ji Chen thought that in order to defeat him in this state, he would have to shorten the station between them. Ching Tian asked if he could dodge bullets in this state and immediately shot him. But Ji Chen didn't dodge a single bullet. Ching Tian realized that he didn't even think about dodging the bullets. Ji Chen approached Sha Ching Tian. Ji Chen said that he is finished now, and hit Ching Tian with a savory blow to the face. Ching Tian flew away and crashed into an aquarium. He dropped his gun, and when the gun landed on the ground it went off on its own, the bullet hit near Ching Tian directly into the aquarium. Nana said that he should have gotten into this aquarium. Water began to drain from the aquarium at a rapid rate. Meanwhile, the police arrived at the scene. Third brother and uncle Dai approached Nana and said that it seems that the police could not find Sha Ching Tian's body, it is impossible that he still managed to survive and escape. Uncle Dai said that they had pretty much ruined his life, and that he would definitely try to take revenge on them. Nana said that he is a very dangerous person and that they should be very careful in the future. Third brother asked where is Ji Chen. Nana said that he was standing next to the police car and talking to Ji Lin. Ji Chen apologized to Ji Ling for lying to her from the beginning. Ji Chen said that their relationship was wrong and asked for forgiveness for that. But suddenly Ji Ling hit him in the face. Ji Chen told Ji Lin that if it made her feel better, she could beat him as much as she wanted. Ji Lin asked why he says that. She said that she didn't care that he lied to her, but one thing was important to her, she asked that the love he felt for her was sincere. Ji Chen replied to Ji Lin that he really liked her very much and that he still loved her, Ji Chen apologized for not telling her this before. But suddenly Ji Lin kissed him. Nana and her team watched this. Third brother smiled and said that it looked like the three of them would be left again, Uncle Dai asked why he thinks so. Nana said that Ji Chen met a real beauty, and also popular and with money, and said that he really thinks that Ji Chen will remain in their company. Meanwhile, Sha Chen Tian broke a glass. And he asked his subordinate why he couldn't find him a better place than this. The subordinate told Mr. Sha that he was wanted and that this hotel was the safest place at the moment. The subordinate asked Chen Tian not to be so upset, because this would not last long, and that he had already contacted the right people, and tomorrow they would be transported to Thailand. Chen Tian was very angry, and said that this little guy was to blame for all this, and that he would definitely take revenge on him. The subordinate told Mr. 
Cha that all his savings had already been transferred to Thailand, and said that in the future he would have many opportunities to take revenge on the guy. Ching Tian agreed and told him to get lost because he wanted to take a shower and rest. And he asked me to find him some pretty girl so he could relax. And then some woman came into his room. This hotel didn't even have hot water, and Ching Tian thought that it would be good if he left here tomorrow. He noticed that some girl was already lying on his bed. But when Ching Tian came closer to her, she laid him on the bed. And when Ching Tian saw her face, then he asked what he forgot here. It was Flutter Fei, she told little Sha that Mr. Cho asked him to give him a few words. Flutter Fei told Ching Tian that he had ruined his future, but the little thing must be left behind. Flutter Fei said that Mr. Chiu gave it to him and that it was time to return it. Ching Tian asked Fei to listen to him and said that he should let him go. Fei said, wasn't he the one who always called her names behind her back? Ching Tian told Fei that he created everything in the white shark with his own hands and now they are doing this to him, and said that soon they will do the same to him. He said that when Ching Tian met Mr. Chiu, he was already a well-known person in criminal circles, and he was a dirty street beggar. She said that then Mr. Chiu noticed her. And he offered to go with her, and said that she would no longer have to dig through the trash in search of food. And he added that if Mr. Chiu asks her to kill someone, he will immediately kill anyone. But suddenly the woman behind her told Miss Fei that they interrogated him, and this guy told them everything. Fei said that then they no longer need Ching Tian. And suddenly she took out a knife and waved it. Fei said that they will all die someday, but Ching Tian will go to the other world today. When Flutter Fei finished with Ching Tian, she told the girls to go from there. The next day, Nana stood in front of the director of Tin Long Group and asked for forgiveness for the fact that they failed the task. She said that this was a check they had received earlier, Nana handed over the check and said that she was returning the entire amount. But suddenly Mary came up to her and handed her a golden card. Mary said that there was 5 million yuan on this card, and asked Nana to take the card. Mary said that although they failed the task, the president was impressed with their skills and said that they wanted to invite them to their company. Nana was very surprised by Mary's words. And then Bai Dai added that although they did not complete the task, it is obvious that they are very reliable people, especially that guy Jichen. Bai Dai said that he is a very sincere young man. Mary said they were inviting her based on her potential. And she added that this money is there for a reason, I'm the only one who hopes that it will become stronger and better. Nana said she understood them. Nana thanked them for their support and trust. And she said that this was a great opportunity for her. But she added that she could not accept this amount. Mary and Bai Dai were very surprised by the words she said. Nana went outside and looked at the Tinlong building group. She thought, what's so cool about this Tinlong group? Nana thought they were saying they were investing in their potential, but they were missing out that Jilling like Jichen. She reasoned that if she accepted this money, it would turn out that she was selling Jichen. She thought that she did not need such handouts. Nana walked into her office and noticed Jichen there. Jichen was glad that the boss returned. Nana was very happy to see Jichen. Jichen ran to hug Nana. But suddenly Nana hit him on the stomach and asked him that didn't he go to Korea? And what the hell is he doing here? Nana asked if only Jilling and Broker Tao went to Korea? Jichen replied that yes, and said that if he went with them, he would not be of much help, so he decided to stay with her. Nana asked didn't they start dating? And she said that now only love at a distance will work. Jichen replied that there was nothing to be done. Nana said that the white shark was looking for Tao Tao on the second day after those events. Jichen replied that he valued Ji Lin very much, and he wanted to help her become the second Wang Yang, and so they went to Korea. Jichen remembered that when he saw Ji Ling off, he told her that the main thing is right, not to start a relationship. Ji Lin asked him, what if she stays, will they be together? Ji Chen told her that being a man, he couldn't be so selfish, and told her to go and make her dreams come true. Ji Lin asked that when she was not there, he would protect himself, Ji Chen replied that when she is gone, he will fall in love with her more and more. Lu Tao took a photo of them as a souvenir. Tao said that they are not parting forever, and that Ji Lin will return. Ji Lin asked him to wait for her return, Ji Chen replied that he would work hard and wait for her. Finally, Ji Chen said goodbye to them and told Ji Lin to behave. Nana asked that Ji Lin went to Korea without him so that no one would interfere with her career. Ji Chen agreed with her and said that Ji Lin is so persistent and that he also needs to work harder. Nana asked why is he only now telling her about all this? Couldn't you tell me earlier? 
Jichen asked what she was talking about. Nana told Jichen that he deprived her of five million. Meanwhile, Lu Tao and Jilin were on a plane to Korea. Tao took the photo of Jichen and Jilin in his arms. And looking at Jichen I missed him. Jichen had a video call with Jilin and told her that they had just compiled a price list, and Nana had changed her phone number and given the old one to him. Jilin said that Jiao is so kind to him and that he needs to work hard and not think about other girls yet. Jichen replied that why does he need this, because he already has her. Jichen said goodbye to Jilin and asked him to say hello to Tao Tao, meanwhile, a girl was rollerblading behind him, telling everyone to disperse. The girl tripped over a stone sticking out of the ground, and began to fall to the ground very quickly. But Jichen reacted quickly and saved the girl from falling. Jichen asked the girl if she was okay, she replied that she was fine, but suddenly some guy told him to let her go. When Jichen looked there, he noticed Big Bear. Big Bear was also very surprised by this meeting, he told Jichen that he did a good job last time. The girl asked Jichen to save her and said that these people were human traffickers. She said that she had just escaped from their lair, the girl said that they want to catch her again and do terrible things to her. Jichen was surprised, does this still exist? Big Bear said that he was very happy to see Jichen, he told Jichen to come with him and said that they had something to talk about. But Jichen was not taken aback and immediately struck the Big Bear in the face. And he said that he had nothing to talk to him about. And then Su Yutu appeared in front of Jichen and said, how dare he interfere with them. Jichen said that it is not surprising that she does not get along with his boss, and said that it means that she is the behind-the-scenes head of the human trafficking company. Su Yutu asked, is Jichen stupid? And she said that this girl is their target for protection. Jichen was surprised, what is the purpose for protection? But suddenly when Jichen turned around, the girl had already disappeared. And then a car drove up to them and stopped next to them. A well-dressed woman with glasses got out of the car. Su Yutu asked Miss Hatai for forgiveness and said that they had missed her, Miss Hatai replied that there was nothing wrong. Miss Hatai told Jichen that he is a smart guy. Jichen was very happy to hear the words. A lot of people, led by Miss Hatai, gathered in Nana's office. Miss Hatai was sitting on the sofa with Jichen and Nana standing in front of her. Nana told Jichen that if he doesn't get anything done in a day, then he will live it in vain, right? Jichen asked her not to worry and said that he would lead her out of the encirclement. Nana told Miss Hatai that if that stupid Jichen offended her, and asked her to be generous and forgive his mistake and said that it was just a misunderstanding. Miss Hatai told Nana that Su Yutu had already told her everything. Miss Hatai told Nana that she came for help. Meanwhile, third brother and Uncle Dai were going to work, Uncle Dai said that if he hadn't taken him to the supermarket early, they wouldn't have made it to the sale. Uncle Dai said that next time they will take Jichen with them. Miss Hatai left the office with her guys. Uncle Dai saw her and thought that it was really her. Miss Hatai got into the car and Su Yutu wished her a good day. Nana asked Su Yutu who Hatai is. And she seems cool. Su Yutu said that Hatai is a US businesswoman, and her fortune is estimated at several billion, she told Nana that she liked them and asked her to use this opportunity. Nana asked Su Yutu why she was telling her about such a good client. Su Yutu told her not to give her any illusions, and that she wanted to find a reliable bodyguard, and she just wanted to satisfy her client. Jichen asked Nana, is it true that they will take on this work? Nana replied that of course they would take on this work, because when else would such an opportunity arise for them? And then they noticed Uncle Dai in front of them. Uncle Dai said they won't take on this job. Meanwhile, they all gathered in the office, and Uncle Dai revealed that longtime mafia boss Hu Jun was her husband. Nana said that he Jun was killed 20 years ago, but why did she only come back now? Uncle Dai said that it seems that he Jun foresaw then that this could happen and therefore sent her abroad in advance. Jichen asked Uncle Dai, how does he know about all this? And did they really know each other? Third brother assumed that they did not know, and said that Uncle Dai used to be the son of a famous mafioso. Jichen and Nana were very surprised by these words spoken. Uncle Dai asked him not to exaggerate. Uncle Dai remembered his childhood. Uncle Dai said that he was an advisor to Hu Jun, and that he developed quite a few plans for him to take over businesses. Uncle Dai said that at that moment he Jun's power was limitless, and that there were more than a dozen bars and nightclubs alone. He owned all the casinos in the city. And then he turned his attention to real estate. Uncle Dai said that he Jun's ambitions began to grow, and without noticing it, 
he became the dark king of the city. And he was his advisor, but in fact he worked for the police. Ji Chen and Nana wondered if he was a double agent. Uncle Dai said that at that time he had already collected the necessary evidence of his crimes, but only he treated him like his own son, so it was hard for him to betray him. And only then did he realize how stupid he was. Uncle Dai recalled that He Jun's very existence jeopardized the activities of other gangs in the city. Therefore, all the gangs gathered together and dealt a fatal blow to He Jun. His henchmen were killed or disappeared, and eventually He Jun himself was brutally killed. And Uncle Dai was captured by the police and spent some time behind bars. He said that if he had grabbed him a little earlier, then maybe he would have remained alive and would have been out of prison now. Uncle Dai said that fortunately Sister Hatai left this dangerous place in advance, he heard that by that time she was already pregnant, and then gave birth to a child. Uncle Dai said that her current activity only means one thing, that she has returned to take revenge. Nana asked why she hadn't heard of such dangerous people before. Third brother said that why talk about matters of the long past. Third brother said that before in the police, he and her father often crossed paths with these people. Nana suggested that she must have come well prepared. Ji Chen told third brother that it was too late to talk about it. Third brother asked, why is it late? And then Nana said that they had already received a check for accepting this task. Uncle Dai and third brother got angry and asked that everything they just said didn't make any sense. Ji Chen said that besides, the boss had already promised her that they would quickly find her daughter. Meanwhile, the glamorous woman arrived at her hotel. All employees kindly greeted Mrs. The lady talked with the financier, and she told her that lately they have had good income, the woman said that all this is thanks to her reasonable management. The lady asked the woman to send more people to us and said that there will always be players who need to borrow money. They looked carefully at the monitor where the game was taking place at the gaming table. The woman asked, what's there at table 20? And I was surprised why so many people gathered there, the woman said that one player had already lost a couple of million, which is why he attracted attention, but their people lent her another 500,000. And this girl was sitting and still playing cards. After each loss, the girl said that she no longer believed in luck. Each time she upped the ante, and people passing by laughed and told her not to screw it up. She got 8 points and the guys got 9 points. She couldn't understand that it was really possible to lose with 8 points too. The girl tried to leave, but the guards approached her and said that she could leave, but first she needed to return the money she had borrowed from them. Meanwhile, Nana and the team were traveling by car. Nana asked Ji Chen if he had seen this girl today. Ji Chen remembered this girl and said that it was definitely her. Nana said that her friend took a photo of her yesterday in the night oriole, and they should probably start looking for her there. Uncle Dai said shouted when he heard the night oriole. Uncle Dai said that this casino belongs to Shanha Group. Meanwhile, the lady from the hotel picked up pepper spray. And she said that she was a very bad girl because two of her assistants almost went blind because of her. The girl said, why are they so rude? After all, she told them that there was no money and they needed to go to an ATM. The guard said that the girl even had a fake passport and that in addition to returning the money, she also had to pay them medical bills. The lady said that if she dared to borrow money, she should be able to pay it back, she said that she could forget about the bill from the hospital, but she would have to pay off the debts with interest and told her to call her relatives to bring money and buy her out. The girl said that if this woman finds out who her parents are, she will be scared. The lady wanted to hear who they were, and ordered her to tell about them. The girl said that her dad is he Jun, and that ten years ago he was the local head of the mafia. The lady became very nervous when she heard this name. The girl smugly asked to be let go. The lady asked who this he Jun was and asked her assistants if they knew him, they didn't know him either. The lady told this girl to call home and let someone come with money. The assistant told the lady that someone was looking for her in the hall. The girl thought that her mother had really come for her. Ji Chen and Nana walked around the hall and asked everyone if they had seen this girl from the photo. They asked each other if they had interviewed everyone present. But suddenly this woman and the girl came out to them and said that there was no need to look for her. The lady said she was safe here, and the girl asked to help her. Ji Chen recognized the girl and told Nana that she was Miss Hatai's daughter. Uncle Dai didn't think she would be so old. Nana told the girl that her mother had sent them and told her to go with them. But the lady told them to slow down and said that she couldn't just leave, and notified them that this girl owed them 500,000. Everyone was shocked by the numbers they heard. 
Ji Chen told Nana that they had just been given a check with a down payment of 500,000, and if they paid them for it, they would not have to take on this job. Uncle Dai agreed and said that Ji Chen was saying everything correctly, third brother said that this girl is quite problematic, and that they should abandon this task while they have the chance. Nana thought that this is how their happiness flew away, and she gave a check for 500,000 and said that they were taking the girl. But the lady said that this would not work, she said that if you take out a loan, then be prepared to pay interest. The woman calculated the principal amount with interest and said that in total it came out to 800,000. Nana was surprised that the huge interest. Third brother said that this was just extortion, and said that either they would take 500,000, or they would take the girl just like that. The lady asked if they really wanted to take her away by force. And suddenly hundreds of people surrounded them, the woman said that don't they know whose territory they are on. The woman said that when they have money, then they can buy the girl. Nana said that it looks like Hatai will have to resolve this situation herself. Then suddenly Jichin said that since this is a casino, then maybe she can play with him once. The mistress said that he really wants to play with her. Jichin said that she heard everything correctly, and if he wins, then she should let the girl go. Uncle Dai told the guy that this woman is not as simple as she seems, and is he sure that he can defeat her. Jichin looked at Nana and asked her to trust him and lend him that check for 500,000. Jichin said that he definitely won't lose. Nana looked at the guy and gave him the check. Jichin said that there are 500,000 here and that now he can play. The woman said that since he wanted to play so much, she accepted his bet. Nana hoped that she would not regret it, Nana thought that why did she obey him. The woman asked Jichin what they would play. She offered dice, mahjong, poker and said that they have everything here. Nana told Jichin to choose the game he plays best. But Jichin replied that he didn't know how to play all the games she listed. But suddenly Jichin invited the woman to play a coin game. The woman asked if he was serious. Jichin said that in gambling, isn't luck the most important thing? And he said that isn't playing with a coin the best way to test his luck. He said that there are only two sides here, either you win or you lose, and there is no third option. The lady suggested starting the game. 